Okay, so now we have a program in the uh, in the uh, prom, and it's programmed to um, take the contents of the program counter, transfer it to register A, and then increment the program counter. So that's that's what this prom is doing. And um, so I have the uh, logic analyzer set up, and we're monitoring the uh, PC increment the register A write and the program counter read. So this is a from and a to. And so uh, let's take a look at, a, at the logic analyzer and see if the uh, signals make sense. All right, so this is what we have on the uh, on the logic analyzer. Um, we have a PC increment uh, on the top. Uh, the two uh, to signal to register A, so that's uh, writing to register A, and the from signal PC, that's the read to this PC. And then this is the clock. So remember we have a 16 micro instructions um, in the prom. So the way that I have it programmed is uh, the first program is uh, uh, from PC to register A. So these two things are happening here. Uh, we have a low going signal for the from PC that enables the um, LS241. Uh, and then the um, two register uh, uh, is a um, right pulse uh, to a 373 chip. So it's the rising edge to latch it into the, into the chip. So you can see this isn't going to do any good at all. Um, we need to have our two-phase clock. We need to be able to assert the from device. And then inside of that pulse, we need to have the uh, the two pulse go. So we need to have a long, low-going pulse and a short, uh, high-going pulse centered on the, uh, the low-going pulse. So that's why we need a two-phase clock. So this wouldn't work as is, but it gives us an idea that our state machine is working fine. So after we execute that instruction, then the next clock cycle, we execute the next instruction, which is increment the program counter, which would happen on this rising edge here. And then we have um, uh, 14 uh, no ops, and then it does it over again. So you can see uh, this thing repeats over and over and over again. So that all looks pretty good. Um, the next thing to do is to uh, get our two-phase clock working. The way that that works in the circuit is um, uh, these signals come out of the um, HC154, the 4 to 16 decoder, um, which has an enable pin on it, um, which is a low going enable pin. And um, what we're going to do is we're going to send, right now that low going pulse is just tied low, so it's always enabled. So this is the, the, the um, length of the pulse, and it, it's exactly one clock cycle long. What we're going to do, though, is we're going to gate the um, uh, LS1 or HC154 with uh, clocks. So one will stay low and then one will go high. So we need to um, get the two phase clock going and add that to the circuit. Okay. Um, I took the um, gal 22 v10 that we had programmed to do generate this uh, two-phase clock so i put it in the circuit so now we have a uh, uh, a clock uh, a double phase clock non-overlapping and here's our original signal so what we want to do is we want to gate these with these other signals so um, the from signal we want to go low and then we want to have a two signal kind of pulse in the middle of it now my original plan was to gate uh, this signal with this signal. Uh, it's not really necessary though. Longer is better, so no need to gate it with this signal. Um, now the um, two we need to narrow down and have it occur in the middle, so this is a great candidate here, this clock here. Um, unfortunately, I need a low going signal, so I've just added an inverter. We can reprogram the gal, but I just added an inverter on the circuit, and uh, let me show you uh, the output of that inverter. Yeah, so here is, um, oops, let me zoom in with one of these. So I've just taken this signal here and I've inverted it so it goes low. 
So now we can gate the two signal with this clock, and it should give us a little pulse. Now I need to find which is which. I think this one should go here. Let's try that. There we go. Look at that. So I've now I've taken this clock and I've gated it with uh, this one. So now if we look at our signals, we have a from program counter, which is gets asserted low. And then in the middle of that, we have this pulse happen, which is the two um, register A. So uh, register A will be clocked on the rising edge. It's a D flip flop and it'll be uh, clocked on this rising edge. So it'll happen really smack dab in the middle of the uh, assertion of the data bus. So that should work out just lovely. So yeah, so the GAL um, 22V10 seems to work great and um, uh, proves that concept. Uh, we should add an inverted output. That'll be easy to do. And then we can clock, clock our uh, devices and give this a try. Okay, success. Zoom in here on the uh, LEDs. So, um, I have the uh, whole thing running. So it's uh, incrementing the uh, program counter. Um, and then uh, it's asserting, asserting the bus and then latching that into the register. So you can watch the bus assertions here as it's counting. So, uh, yeah, it's actually doing something. Awesome. So two-phase clock is the seems to have fixed things, and uh, we've sort of written a first program. It's not really a program; it's a microcode. We've we've done a microcode instruction, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but we do have uh, data flowing on the bus now, um, and the state machine is running a program, and um, yeah. So we can uh, start to think about doing more complicated things. So I've been talking about the clock, but I haven't showed it. Um, I'm using the uh, 555 inside the uh, the power ace here, and so the uh, uh, clock is coming out uh, of here, and it's going into this chip here. So this chip is my GAL uh, 22V10, and so uh, can zoom in a bit here. Um, so this wire is the output of the 555 and it's going into pin 1 of the GAL. Uh, so the clock always goes into pin 1. If you take a look at the schematic of the 22V10, uh, you'll see that's true. And then the outputs, uh, this is just a ground here. Uh, the outputs are three pins uh, and they're programmed to be my P0 and P1. And then the third pin is, is inverted P0. So uh, those three three signals are the only ones that I need for the uh, uh, for the circuit and uh, these are going off to my logic analyzer but you can see I'm actually only using two of the signals right now I'm only using um, P1 and not P0 uh, so those are the only things going out right now uh, but I probably will maybe use the uh, the other ones we'll see um, but anyway uh, let me um, let me show you what the uh, uh, program looks like in um, Win couple. So um, this is the uh, win win couple program. Uh, you've seen sort of before. It's just kind of stream streamlined now. Um, so pin one is where the clock comes in. So that comes from a five five five, and uh, I have uh, three pins to find us Q zero Q one Q two. That's going to be a counter, and then my output for my uh, clock faces are going to be eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. P0, P1, and P3. P3 is just going to be not P0. So we hear the next line is the definition of P0. Um, it's going to be um, not Q2 and not Q1. And uh, there's a video uh, a couple of videos ago showing the uh, truth tables on how to do this clock generation. So that's covered in there. And then the only other line, the P1 is also covered in there. The only other line that I added was P3, which is just not P0. And then the rest of it is just a uh, counter, counts to 
uh, counts from zero to five and then resets, so it counts six times. And then uh, uh, power on reset um, uh, defined at the bottom there. So uh, that's my entire clock circuit, just uh, uh, going to be a 555 and then uh, uh, the uh, GAL 22V10 to do the uh, phasing of the clocks and everything else I'll need.